Good morning everyone, delighted to see so many people here on time and uh, uh, ready to go. Uh, we're delighted to welcome you to our conference this morning to share the voices of children with you. Marriage equality has been working to achieve access to civil marriage for same-sex couples for a number of years now. We formed initially to support the brave case taken by Catherine Zapone and Anne-Louise Gilligan to have their Canadian marriage recognised for tax purposes by the Irish Revenue Commissioners. As you will know, the High Court, while acknowledging that as a same-sex couple, these two women were experiencing discrimination, rejected their appeal, their request to have their marriage recognised. This case is now on appeal to the Supreme Court and we hope to have a listed date for that decision later this year. The four strategies which marriage equality has been pursuing to achieve access to civil marriage include a legal strategy, part of which is our work supporting Catherine and Louise's case. We also have three other strategies, a communication strategy where we give visibility and create spaces for the voices of uh, gays and lesbians to articulate our reasons for wanting access uh, to marriage and also to, to share with the public how uh, public opinion polls and independent polls that uh, we and others have carried out show that wider society really does support our call uh, for marriage access. Our recent uh, We Are Family poster and postcard campaign, there are some of the postcards there at the, the, the desk, has communicated the diversity of lesbian and gay people who want and deserve the right to have the option to marry the person they love. The political strategy, which is aimed at our public representatives, including our TDs and senators, is linked very much to our mobilisation strategy, where gay and straight people have been telling their TDs that it's time for marriage equality now. It was during our meetings and strategy discussions in marriage equality that we began to focus our attention on how the failure of the state to provide legal status for our relationships was leading to great hardship and was discriminatory. We began to see clearly by listening to our own lived experiences and talking to other lesbians and gays around Ireland and internationally that only access to civil marriage would really lay the foundation required for full recognition of the human rights of LGBT families. It was during one of these meetings with the sons and daughters of lesbian and gay couples that we began to realise how the children of LGBT parents have forcefully experienced the backlash of denied equality in Ireland. One of the children, a, a young man with great eloquence, force and clarity, said at that meeting, look, everyone talks about us, but no one asks us. And so the idea for the voices of children was born, and Marriage Equality has worked with the authors and the children for almost two years to produce the report before you today. The details of the report will be shared by the author and the young people, children themselves, who will give you their views on their experiences of being part of a same-sex parented family later this morning. For my part, as Chair of Marriage Equality, I want to express gratitude and admiration for the innovative but robust methodological approach taken in the development of this report and commend it to you for detailed study. I also want to express my disappointment at the fact that the government has chosen to deny some children their rights by failing to provide them with legal recognition to their parents. This has happened despite Ireland being a signatory to the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. This has happened contrary to the advice of our own Ombudsman for Children. The rights of the non-biological parent to be considered to be allowed to adopt their de facto son or daughter does not exist. Yet, dozens of gay and lesbian people foster children all around the country for the state, good enough to foster, but not good enough to adopt. The adoption legislation requires urgent amendment to effect this change. I'm disappointed that patently and purposely, the rights of children were ignored in the recently adopted Civil Partnership Act. Children living in same-sex headed families in Ireland have been consciously ignored isolated and consigned to a legal vacuum, thus heightening their vulnerability, lessening their right to family security, and frankly, insulting them and their loving parents by passing an act which is silent about them and their real lives and ignores their rights.
an act to which speaker after speaker in the Oireachtas stood up and repeated the phrase, I know this bill is not equality, but. Accepting less than equality makes it a harder task for us now to establish legal rights and entitlements for LGBT families. Accepting less than equality now means that politicians, advocates, pressure groups, and all of those who want to see the human rights and equality for all children established in Ireland with urgency must come together and use all forthcoming opportunities to end the legal vacuum in which these families are suffering. For our part, Marriage Equality has welcomed a representative from the newly formed group Believe in Equality, B, into our board to help us devise and work towards establishing the rights of children. We see this work as an integral part of our work to achieve access to civil marriage and achieve full legal equality for all our families. The challenges for the policymakers and the politicians and other advocate and social change groups are, I think, evident in the report. The conference today and the workshops this afternoon are a part of scoping out what much be, must be done to meet these challenges and why we must do it. We welcome you here today to join with us in informing and engaging on the issues. And we look forward to sourcing the support and resources that are needed to see more substantive evidence base of the Irish experience of children of LGBT families, which can lead the policy direction and drive the urgency for action that the voices of children in this report call for. As Maninia has said, we're joined by many eminent Irish and international thinkers and researchers and social commentators and legal minds here today. We've many policymakers and child welfare and children's rights and equality organisations represented, professionals and uh, advocates amongst us. We also have LGBT parents and their children, a rich mix that is needed to help us plan our route for this vital task of achieving a quality of treatment, opportunity and outcome for all families. Later today, we're delighted to welcome Minister Kieran Cuff, who has agreed to formally launch the report and take it back to government, where we hope he will get the support for this initiative, which we know it deserves. On behalf of the Board of Marriage Equality, I wish to thank the independent researchers for their excellent work. I want to thank the staff, volunteers and Board of Marriage Equality who work so hard and remain fully committed to achieving access to civil marriage for gay and lesbian people in Ireland. A special thank you must go to the young people whose voices speak clearly and ring with such truth. Surely those who believe in justice and seek to cherish all the children equally can only be moved to protect them and future generations of brave children. Through this report, they are dissolving prejudice and hatred and by their own actions are building the paths to justice and equality. We salute you in solidarity with admiration, respect and with love. Thank you.